Isa pong maganda at mapagpalang araw sa inyong lahat. Ngayon, higit kailan paman, and I'm sure you will agree with me, kailangan-kailangan natin ng genuine revival. Ngunit, para magkaroon tayo ng true revival, marami rin po tayong kakailanganin. Una na po rito ang kapangyarihan ng Diyos. Ang malungkot lang po, ito isang bagay na hindi natin kayang likhain. Subalit, ang magandang balita naman, pwede natin iposisyon ang ating mga sarili upang matanggap ang kapangyarihan ng Diyos. Ano ang mga pinakakailangan natin to put ourselves in position to receive this revival power? Marami po tayong pwedeng maisip. Ngunit ang nag-iisang bagay that encompasses everything that we need is commitment. Napakalaki ng kawalan ng commitment sa church ngayon, higit kesa noon. At kung nais po nating maranasan ang genuine revival sa ating kapanahunan, kailangan ng commitment ng bawat isang mananampalataya. Doon po sa Book of Psalm, chapter 37, verse 5, sa New American Standard Bible, nakasulat, Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in Him, and He will do it. Kapatid kaibigan, kung iko-commit natin sa Lord ang ating buhay at magtitiwala tayo sa Kanya, we can have great things. Wala pong mahirap para sa Diyos, amen? Walang imposible para sa Kanya. Kailangan lang natin na maging committed po tayo sa Kanya. So ang title po ng pag-aaralan natin for today ay The Power of Commitment. So what is the meaning of commitment? Pakinggan niyo po ang ilan sa akin pong nakuhang kahulugan ng commitment. Babasahin ko po sa inyo. Una, commitment is a contractual engagement involving the fulfillment of an obligation. Ikalawa, commitment means to give over to another the care of something or the use of something. It means to entrust. Commitment means to pledge oneself to a particular position or course of action. Yan po yung ikatatlo. Now, spiritually speaking, commitment means identification and involvement with the person and purpose of Jesus Christ. Commitment brings about a responsibility to availability. Tatandaan nyo po yun. So you see, God requires of us obedience not accomplishment. Halimbawa po, si Prophet Isaiah ay nagpreach sa isang bansa na tila sarado ang mga tainga at bulag ang mga mata. Ngunit siya ay nagtagumpay dahil sa kanyang obedience at commitment, hindi po dahil sa kanyang mga accomplishments. Tandaan niyo po itong mabuti. True commitment will result in obedience. Sabi nga po ni Spurgeon, and I quote, Faith and obedience are in the same bundle. He who obeys trust God, and he who trust God obeys Him. Now, there are certain opposition to commitment to God. Number one po yan, opposition from within. Ito po yung pinakamatinding opposition na kakaharapin natin. Halimbawa, masyado po tayong busy. Gusto nating manatili sa ating comfort zone. Hindi convenient sa ating lifestyle at goals ang maglingkod sa Diyos. Yan po ang opposition from within. Ang pangalawa po ay opposition from without. Ito po yung pag-uusig or persecution. Ngunit, alam nyo po ba na marami sa mga persecutions ay opportunities in disguise? So please quit looking at the opposition and see the opportunities. Why? Because... There is a promise of provision. God gives grace to carry out service for those who are committed. Remember this, God's work done in God's way never runs out of God's supply. Tandaan din po natin ito, that there is a demand for holiness. Our holy God requires holiness in a committed life. Kailangan natin maging motivated by love, Work unto the Lord and not as unto men, strive to benefit others, and seek to glorify God. Now, why maging truly committed po tayong lahat? Amen po ba? We should commit to God today, number one, in salvation. 
Okay? So, doon po sa book of 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 12b, sa New Living Translation, nakasulat po, I know the one in whom I trust, and I am sure that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him until the day of his return. Sa Acts chapter 16 verse 31 sa NLT rin po nakasulat, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved along with everyone in your household. And of course po, dun sa Ephesians chapter 2 verses 11 to 13, ganito naman po ang nakasulat. Please listen carefully. Don't forget that you Gentiles used to be outsiders. You were called uncircumcised heathens by the Jews who were proud of their circumcision even though it affected only their bodies and not their hearts. In those days, you were living apart from Christ. You were excluded from citizenship among the people of Israel. And you did not know the covenant promises God had made to them. You lived in this world without God and without hope. Sa so verse 13, But now, You have been united with Christ Jesus. Once you were far away from God, but now you have been brought near to Him through the blood of Christ. Praise God. Number two, we should commit today to God in service, to God and to man. Sa Acts chapter 13, verse 36b, nakasulat, David had served God's purpose in his own generation. Si Jesus din po ay naging alipin para sa atin. Remember po doon sa book of Philippians chapter 2 verses 6 to 7, nakasulat po ang ganito, Who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness. Christ made himself a servant unto us. He washed the disciples' feet. So, what does it mean to serve God? Una po, by keeping unspotted from worldliness is one form of service. Kailangan mamuhay po tayo ng holy. Now, number two, reading and studying God's word is a form of service to God. Number three, Praying is a service to God. Alam niyo po ba na pag ipinag natin ang ating kapwa, tayo ay naglilingkod sa kanila. At sa paglilingkod natin sa kanila, tayo po ay naglilingkod sa Diyos. Ikaapat po, paying tithes and giving offering is service to God. At ikalima, by being a witness. Kung ikaw ay may asawa at may ma- mga anak, Rearing your children properly is a service to God. Setting an example in holiness and love is a service to God. Teaching is a service to God. Preaching, singing, dancing, yung pag usher po, and all the physical things one might do for the church and in the church are services to God. Number three, we should commit to God in any situation. Bagamat bugbog sarado, at nakakulong po sila Paul at Silas na natili po silang committed sa Diyos. Doon po sa book of Acts chapter 16, verses 22 to 25, ganito po ang nakasulat. Listen carefully. A mob quickly formed against Paul and Silas, and the city officials ordered them stripped and beaten with wooden rods. They were severely beaten, and then they were thrown into prison. The jailer was ordered to make sure they didn't escape. So the jailer put them into the inner dungeon and clamped their feet in the stocks. Verse 25, Around midnight, Paul and Silas, now listen to this, were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening. Wow! Kapatid kaibigan, how committed are you to getting attached from the power of God. Are you fully committed to Him? Let's pray. Dearest God and Heavenly Father, kami po ay lubos-lubos na nagpapasalamat po sa iyo sa iyong kabutihan sa amin. Nagpapasalamat kami sapagkat patuloy mo kaming pinapaalalahanan regarding our commitment to you 
and our service to you and to our fellow men. Lord, salamat po. Salamat sa Holy Spirit na walang sawa talagang nagpapaalala at nagtuturo po sa amin. Nagpapasalamat po kami sapagkat nais mo kami ay maging committed sa iyo sa araw na ito hanggang sa natitira pang buhay namin na number one, mag-commit po kami sa iyo in salvation. At pangalawa, Lord, mag-commit kami sa iyo in our service sa iyo at sa aming kapwa. At ikatlo, mag-commit po kami sa iyo sa pamamagitan o anuman po ang aming situation sa buhay. Salamat po ng marami. Ikaw pong madakila sa amin, sa aming pong paglilingkod na ginagawa sa iyo. Ikaw pong patuloy na maluwalhati. Ikaw ang patuloy na parangalan. At sa pangalan po ni Jesus, ito po ang aming samot dalangin ngayon at magpakailanman. Amen and amen and amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you. And may the Lord turn His face toward you and give you peace. Shalom. Amen. Glory to God.